Gilcrease Orchard has deep roots in Southern Nevada history. It has stood the test of time in the desert and has flourished for over 90 years. Hey, Mark. Hey, John. Welcome to the orchard. Thank you. Nice to see you. An orchard in the middle of the desert. Who knew? It's a remarkable thing. Meet Mark Rubin, the director of the Gilcrease Orchard. He's been working here for over seven years. Yeah, it's beautiful out here. How many acres you got? There's about 65 acres here. And what are you growing out here? Fruits and vegetables. So about 60% fruit trees and the rest of them are row crops, carrots, beets, and do summer they, stuff. Do they all blossom and come to harvest at the same time or you're constantly working? No, always different seasons. We try to spread it out so we have a longer harvest time. The orchard harvests its crops just outside flashy Las Vegas. The Gilcrease family came down here from Reno back in the 20s and they homesteaded this northwest part of town and uh, they were really isolated from what little town there was in Las Vegas. So they were kind of a frontier family out here all by themselves. Elda and Leonard Gilcrease packed up their lives in Reno and moved south with their two sons, Ted and Bill, in hopes for a better future. When the 1929 depression hit, Leonard left his family to pursue other dreams. Elda and the kids held on to the land that continues to thrive to this day. This is so beautiful out here. The further you get into this, the more beautiful it gets. It's like I'm on the cover of a salad dressing bottle or something. Right. What are we looking at here? We planted these carrots back in November of this last year. And uh, so let's dig up a few and try them. Now, do you find that people come out here as a curiosity or they really want to learn about this stuff? Like, it's more about the entertainment, really. Huh. So entertainment is, the food is secondary. It's more of the entertainment and having fun and being together as a Look family. Look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. Look at that. Uh, we can wash them off and then eat them. Good. Let's do that. Maybe I won't even wash it. You don't have to. It tastes a little more earthy that way. Nice. But they're very sweet carrots. They have got a rich color. They're full of flavor. And they got some minerals on the outside. <laughs> it's really a good day. You probably meet people from all over. We do. In fact, most of the people that come here really have accents. So they're from other countries um, all over the world. That's kind really. of neat. Yeah. And so they, they come out here because they're bringing out their grandkids or their kids, and this is how they grew up growing things, and so they're trying to teach their kids about it too. And so that's important to them. The farm-to-table experience can be extremely rewarding, especially for kids who get a whole new appreciation for their meals. Do you realize how fortunate you are to be outdoors all the time? It is. It, it beats, really beats having a real job, working in an office. I don't know if I could do that anymore. <laughs> Speaking of beets, is this what we have here? We planted these back in November. Oh yeah. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at that. Look at that. Do you have a, do you have a, a problem with uh, little rascals running around trying to take your stuff? Sometimes, we, right in through here, we have some gophers. Oh, I can see why. <laughs> that is just awesome. You know, I can see why people would come out here, even if you did this periodically, just to remind you of where the food source comes right, from. Right, right. Can you show me something else? Sure, let's look at some kale. Oh, let's go. Is this the kale? This is the kale. I now, eat this fresh a lot, just right off the plant. When, and when was this planted? This was planted in January. Everything here just tastes different. It tastes like it's in color. <laughs> what, is, um, what is the future of the farm here? What, what plans do you have? Uh, we're just trying to diversify and not have so many things that come on all at one time. Like right now, our apples, we have some summer apples that come on in July, and it's too many for us to sell. No one wants to pick apples in July. They want to pick them in September and October. The Gilcrease Orchard welcomes everyone to come pick their own produce. So there's no entrance fee like there are at some you pick operations, but uh, generally leafy greens are $2 a pound and everything else is a dollar a pound. Pumpkins, 50 cents a pound. And the education is free. And the education is free. I just want to say thanks for taking the time to talk to us today. Oh, it was a pleasure. I'm glad you came out. While Ted Gilcrease took the orchard under his wing, his younger brother Bill nurtured a passion for birds. 
This passion later culminated in the creation of the Gilcrease Nature Sanctuary in the 70s. Back in the 20s, Bill and Ted Gilcrease owned about 900 acres out here, and Ted ran the orchard. Bill had a sanctuary, and now his granddaughter-in-law runs a sanctuary. Her name is Christina, and so uh, we're making the short drive right now. Christina? Yes, John. Hey, how are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. I was expecting something much smaller. This is really a big place. Absolutely. It is nine acres up front here. Christina Salamone is the director of the Gilcrease Nature Sanctuary. Bill has always had a love for animals. And back in 1976, he purchased this property from a couple that had a zoo running here. And he brought all his menagerie of animals over here and just started his own little private Animal sanctuary. Nine acres. I mean, this is more than just a few chickens and a cow. Not that there's anything wrong with those animals, but what are some of the animals that you have here? Well, we've got about 1,500 animals, uh, birds, a lot of parrots. We have goats. We have tortoises. We have ponies and llamas and ostriches, and most of them are rescues. you got a lot of mouths to feed. How do you do that? Yes, we do. Uh, private donations from the community, as well as donations from the grocery stores. And I saw earlier some little fuzz balls. I don't know. Oh, there they there are, they right are. there. Yeah, they were just born today, so this is their first day. Oh my gosh, it's their first day. Yes. And already they're on TV. Bill is still around, right? Yes, he is. He will be 96 in June, and he is still the president of our board of directors. As a nonprofit organization, the Gilcrease Sanctuary counts on the help of volunteers to keep its doors open. Who's this? This is Granny. She is our oldest resident uh, outside of the tortoises. Oh, she looks sweet. She is very sweet. She's one of the favorites of the children because anybody that comes over, she walks up to be pet. Oh, how old is Granny? But she's over 30. She's over 30? Yes. Oh, she is a sweetie. She is. So anybody that comes here to the sanctuary, if you're going to see one thing, make sure you see. Come see Granny. Come see Granny. Yes. She wants to say hello. She loves it. At the sanctuary, every animal can find a new home, even the odd ones. Watch your clothes. Hey, <laughs> who's this? This is Caesar, and he likes to eat people's clothes. Caesar? Looks like somebody put him in the dryer. <laughs> and he shrunk. <laughs> No sanctuary anywhere in the world is ever complete without a pig. Right. Who is this? Uh, we do not have a name yet. We oh. are going to have a name contest. Is this a boy or a girl? This is a girl, I believe. Can I enter the contest? Absolutely. I'm naming it Kate. Or maybe it's a boy. It's a boy. Oh, it's a boy. It is a boy. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> I don't know. Kevin Bacon? <laughs> <laughs> After a Gilcrease field day, it's clear how much this family provides for the Las Vegas Valley community. Boy, I bet kids love coming here. They do, especially when we have baby goats. Oh, look at them. Look how cute they are. Hi. Hi. Well, hi. Oh. Hi. Hi. Oh. I'm cute. I'm cute. He says I'm cute. Christina, I just wanted to thank you for spending time with us today. This place is perfectly named. It's a sanctuary. I feel more peaceful today spending time with these animals and with you than I felt in a long time. Thank you. Well, we really appreciate you coming out here. The sanctuary is a hidden gem, just one of many that you'll find in Nevada. <laughs>